So I want to welcome you to my presentation on developing a smart crisis management plan. Um, like many of you, I am working from home. So if you hear noises in the background, my kids are home. Uh, we have a dog. Uh, she may bark. I hope not. During the course of this presentation, I tried to create as much of a home office environment as I possibly could. But I felt that it was critical to get some resources out to uh, the business community to in particular the small business community uh, at large and at least give uh, some crisis management management tools that, that could help uh, maybe bridge the gap between now and uh, hopefully uh, the not too distant future when uh, when we're getting to the other side of this crisis but um, to start off with I wanted to take an acronym that many of us are familiar with smart um, we've associated that with goal, goal setting I wanted to apply it to crisis management. So we're going to be talking about a, a SMART acronym, but, but as it pertains to crisis management. So we're going to talk about sustainment and ways to mitigate risk, how to take action during a crisis, create a resilient organization, and then how to occasionally transcend so that we can get above and then eventually get beyond uh, the situation that we uh, are currently in as far as our crisis business plan. So normally I take a minute to describe my background, which uh, I primarily work with organizations and businesses that are looking to scale and, and grow very rapidly with uh, very good discipline around their operational and cost controls. Um, but today I'm going to be tapping into my background uh, that I started in in the Rangers uh, almost 30 years ago, and I'm going to be applying that to uh, the, the normal business plan. So, so thinking about crisis action, how to exist in a very chaotic environment, um, which I, I think none of us would dispute the current situation is, uh, is extremely fast in terms of its evolution and how we're moving through uh, this time frame um, uh, globally, uh, not just as a, as a country, but globally. Um, we're all going through this. And uh, so we want to talk about ways where, where we can mitigate the effects of chaos and really look at how do we make good, sound, fundamental business decisions that allow us not only just to, to survive and, and hopefully maybe get to a point where we can, we can thrive in this environment, but then again, sustain that and then look to the future um, uh, as we come out of this crisis, hopefully in the, in the not too distant future. So let's set a little bit of, a, of, a, of a, some ground rules about what our expectations are dur during a crisis. Um, the first thing that you should expect is that we're going to have some unexpected events. Um, as it, it's pretty clear right now, things can change on a dime, things ramp up. Um, we find out new information all the time about uh, you know, the way the COVID-19 virus uh, impacts the body, the way it uh, propagates, the way that uh, we uh, communicate that to other people and the and the way that the health community is dealing with the crisis right so it's changing constantly and we're getting a lot of information from a lot of different sources and some of its fact based and some of its opinion based but what's clear is that there is a lot of media that's being thrown out there at us and and we have to be able to as business owners and leaders be able to create uh, plans and risk management plans and ways to, to conduct things that, that hopefully we can get a, a little bit of stability in terms of how we get our data, how we use that data to make decisions, and then create frameworks that allow our businesses to be uh, resilient. So uh, the way I, design, uh, I describe resilience is the ability for an organization or an individual to be flexible, to survive, and then encourage proactive engagement. So, so these are the types of things that we're going to be talking about today. And uh, I hope the SMART acronym, uh, you know, maybe, maybe helps out in terms of being able to, to go through the process of being able to plan for, for, for you, for your organization, for your business. So the way I tend to start in terms of looking at different problems that I deal with uh, for my clients is I like to create a list of questions. And I think about um, currently where we're at. Um, one of the things that, that is really imperative about this time is, is we look at ways to help sustain a business. 
we want to be able to look at how can we continue to operate even in this environment? What are some ways that, 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 that we might be able to, to go out and be able to serve the clients that we serve or have our customers still be able to come in and do business with us? So first of all, we want to think about who are these people? Who are the folks that do business with us? Why are they doing business with us? And, and, and what were their uh, pre-crisis expectations? And then maybe what are their expectations today from us as service providers or product providers, right? So think about that. And then also thinking about, you know, how can we meet those expectations? Uh, and, and in some circumstances, it, it might be, it might seem and appear to be extremely difficult to create that kind of environment. But I want to encourage you to be creative. I, uh, you know, one of the things I'll talk about towards the conclusion of this presentation is that you know, one of the best skills that you can develop uh, during a crisis is this idea of being positively creative. It doesn't mean putting rose-colored glasses on. It doesn't mean denying that there's a crisis. But what it means is really thinking about the situation and, and, and really doing the due diligence to ask great questions. Can it be done? And, and, and we want to be thinking about that because it's likely that if some resources exist, and we can get a hold of them, it's possible for us to be able to cobble together the same sorts of value chains and be able to, to put those products together in ways, maybe they're different from before, maybe it's not as profitable, but at least it allows us to sustain the business today, create a solid footing and then be able to go out tomorrow and, and grow our business more profitably, hopefully when the business environment returns um, to something approaching maybe uh, you know, the normal that we were used to. So think about your gaps. What are the things that you had pre-crisis and what, what do you need today to be able to, to, to keep your business afloat? Um, what are the critical resources? What are the things that you absolutely can't do business without, right? And then likewise, what are the things that, that aren't necessary? What are the things that you maybe don't need, um, but, but it's fat that's currently in your organization that you can trim so that you can, again, um, seek ways to sustain that business during this time period? And then lastly, thinking about your value chain, and I'm going to go over just a basic value chain uh, as a review um, for many of you uh, towards the end of this presentation. But I want you to be thinking about your entire value chain, everybody's, but your suppliers, your customers, your employees, and your technology, and, and the ways that you're delivering your product uh, pre-crisis, and then the ways you might have to change that value chain in order to, to deliver those products or services uh, moving into the future. So one of the things that's important about any kind of risk or crisis is to think about ways to mitigate the impact of the crisis. So you think about your finances. Uh, you know, one of the key resources that any business has is access to capital and being able to sustain access to capital, keeping liquidity. Um, but think about your ratios. You know, what were they pre-crisis? I mean, you might not want to think about this, but, but it's, it's a great discussion to have. You know, again, it's, it's about staying grounded in reality. And, and thinking about, okay, well, how do I keep the lights on in the business? And what's the minimum level of production or revenue that I might need to be able to just, to, to just keep the business going or to keep my professional practice going? How do I keep that moving into the future? Think about substitutes. Again, uh, I, I encourage you to really dig deep and, and be creative about this. Um, how are you communicating? Uh, in, in, in this crisis. You know, we, we can't necessarily get up in, in a physical sense. Uh, you know, many of us are, um, uh, look, uh, we, we've been uh, either mandated to do it or uh, we've been told that we need to work from home for community distancing at the, at the moment. So how do we get out there? And if we can't be face to face, how do we get the message out? How do we tell people what's going on? You know, if, you, if you've got a good media plan, I work with some PR agencies, um, and, and one of the biggest things that, that, that they're recommending to clients is really developing a great PR crisis communications strategy. So really engaging with the media. So if you've got good relationships there, I um, highly encourage you to think about ways to, to get your message out using uh, you know, good conventional approaches and, and digital media. right? So you know, great, great channels like you know, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And uh, for professional services providers, uh, definitely, definitely be using LinkedIn and, and, and getting involved with, uh, with groups. Um, what resources need to be absolutely protected as you go through, uh, as we go through this time period together? And then think about risk. 
you know, this is going to be, uh, I'll talk about this in the business planning. We, we, you know, the thing, one of the things we don't know is how long is this going to last? We don't really know. We, you know, we hear a lot of information, you know, we hear two weeks, we hear 18 months and we hear all, everything in between, but we really don't have a good sense of how long this is going to last. And that's probably one of the biggest question marks out there. Again, expect the unexpected. You know, if we had to go 18 months, what's your level of risk in that? If we had to go two weeks, you know, what's your acceptable level of risk there? But think about, you know, the entire spectrum of risk and how to, to mitigate that. And, and one of the things I'll talk about is, is creating multiple plans so that you can accommodate and have different triggers along the way so that, so that your, your plan can uh, adjust based on time periods and resource constraints and uh, the, the way that um, your, your capital is coming in or isn't. So different ways to adjust your business based on the circumstances that you find yourself in. Lastly, think about your decision-making framework. How are you taking information in? Are you just making decisions based on uh, uh, hard data or is there conjecture or opinion? It's not bad to have a way to look at the future and, and create a picture, especially if you want to see, okay, how long is this going to last? You know, is it going to be two weeks or 18 months? Some of that's going to be uh, left to your individual discretion, but you want to have a way to take yourself through the decision-making process that's very methodical, that takes in data and allows that data to end up driving the process for decision-making. Um, so it takes some of the emotions out of it. So after we compile that list of questions, then we really want to get into the business of planning and, and, and then taking concrete and decisive actions that allow us to move the ball forward. So again, we're taking in information and, and some of that is a little bit reactionary, especially in a crisis because we just don't have a lot of information oftentimes. And so getting that in, but at, you know, after that happens, it's like, okay, I've got this. We want to start to get on level ground and be able to make decide, uh, make the, uh, give ourselves the ability to take decisive actions, get out there and start to lead from the front. So some things that you might consider thinking about routines for you and for your employees. How do you create a routine that's going to work? You have to work virtually. How do you, how do you create these touch base times with, with your team? So you can uh, get that same cohesion, especially if you had a tight knit group and you were working, uh, you know, uh, together as a as a as a solid team pre-crisis. You want to be able to maintain that, and you know, tools like Zoom, which which I'm on today, um, or different video conferencing tools, are fabulous for being able to uh, to, to to do that. Um, especially if you've got a a way of communicating that's predictable. So getting a rhythm or a cadence, um, creating a flow in terms of your dialogue thinking about the elements uh, in your business, um, in your professional practice, thinking about all of those different ways that, that people want to be communicated with on your team um, and with your uh, other stakeholders as well. So creating a predictable, predictable, predictable communications pattern that, that gives people a sense that, hey, I'm going to be in touch. Um, you know, I can count on uh, Brian or your business to communicate in a regular fashion. And, and here's the message that I should expect in terms of the delivery. Um, we want to create and communicate viable alternatives that can meet uh, stakeholder expectations, right? So if, um, you know, you're delivering a service and, uh, you know, it may turn out that, that, that maybe it, 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 a little, it is a bridge too far, right? But we still want to be communicating because post-crisis, it's likely that we're gonna go back to uh, a lot of our former clients or customers, and we're gonna want them to come back to us. And, and we're gonna to want to be still communicating, even in this environment where, you know, it, it might just be difficult to do. But at the same time, you know what? We wanna let them know that we're doing everything that's possible. And you're see, starting to see that in a lot of the advertising that's uh, coming out right now. Uh, a lot of companies out there are, are talking about ways to, you know, to mitigate the effects. I see it with the car companies offering much longer terms, delivering cars, being able to shop online, um, um, you know, ways to create that dealership experience without actually having to go into, in, into a, a car dealership to do that. And lastly, engaging, engaging, engaging. You know, just because we are practicing, um, uh, you know, good 
social distancing doesn't mean that we have to be distant from a, the perspective of being in communication with our clients. They actually want to hear from us. Um, you know, people don't want to be isolated. We, we uh, crave social interaction and uh, your clients, your customers are exactly the same way. And uh, if they're loyal customers and a lot of you out there have loyal clients and customers, they're going to want to hear from you. They're going to want to hear that you're out actively out there and they're going to want to know that you're okay. I mean, uh, you know, they're going to want to know that when this is all over with, they can expect, um, you know, maybe it's a, a little bit different. Maybe our, our value, uh, uh, the way we deliver the product or the service is a little bit different, but at the same time, they're going to want to know that, Hey, wait a second. There's a normal that's out there. And the people that were part of my life before the crisis are going to be a part of my life after the crisis as well. And, and that's uh, very, very, uh, just as true of personal relationships as it is uh, in our business relationships. So this goes into creating a resilient organization. So resilience is going to be one of the biggest keys to getting through uh, this type of a crisis where we just don't have a, a good idea of what the timeframes are, are going to look like. So, so I highly, highly recommend creating a crisis business plan and creating a dynamic crisis business plan. So thinking about this in terms of uh, not only a couple of weeks, but you know, what happens for the next year, 18 months, you know, how does, how does the different information that's out there and that's coming in impact the business as we go along. If you've got a team and you've got employees, how are you going to communicate your expectations around the new business plan, the crisis business plan, um, so that you can set an expectation of, yes, this is what we did pre-crisis, this is what we're going to be doing now, and this is what we're going to be doing going forward. You know, you can create a great sense of stability in your team as you're moving forward. So you can, you can grow your organization, you can think about the organization, but in a time like this, supporting the organization with a framework is one of the most important things that, that you can do. Be visible. So again, you might not be able to meet with people in person, but you can get on a video conference call like this. Um, you can create uh, what uh, I had a former manager when I first uh, left active military service, he, he used to say, Create presence in your absence. So, you know, if you can't necessarily hop on a call and be with your team, but, but you can touch base with them in emails or text messages, or you can post things on Facebook, um, you know, you can communicate and you can create that presence in ways that people know that you're there and, and, and they know that you're sitting in the same circumstances that they are. And uh, that just goes a long, long, long way in terms of creating uh, that cohesion uh, in your organization. Um, creating data uh, driven decision trees. So when you think about, again, all the information that's swirling out there, um, uh, I spent uh, quite a bit of my time uh, as a military intelligence officer in the army. And, and one of the things that was really, uh, I think to me, most important about that experience is we wouldn't give recommendations or um, make decisions without having at least three to five points of confirmation before I gave my commander uh, a recommendation. So I'd encourage you to look for different points of data <laughs> that, that um, especially if it's more of an opinion piece, look at what different spots where you can get, uh, you know, a sense for what's really going on in your, in your industry or your business or your organization. Think about all the different places that you can pull from. And, and I'd encourage you, <clears throat> pull from as wide a sphere as you can so that you get a, a, a very, very big picture and, and preferably, preferably rely on data. Don't, um, I'd, I'd encourage you to, to steer away from uh, opinions. Opinions are, 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 are great. Um, it's a hallmark of, of, of the country, but when it comes to, to making decisions, data is really the, gonna be your best friend uh, in a situation where we just, you know, ha have a lot of things that swirl around and, uh, you know, the unexpected can occur at any moment. So your data is going to be your best friend. Lastly, we want to encourage feedback and active learning. So this entire process is, is based on a methodology where we keep going back and looking at the planning process, taking data in, looking at the experience that we have, and constantly going back and applying our lessons learned into our organizations. And lastly, 
sometimes we have to transcend the situation. So I, the first thing I put in there is, is make sure that we keep it real. This isn't about denying that, that we're in a crisis. It's about acknowledging that we happen to be in a crisis and that it's real and that people have uh, feelings and emotions in our organization. But at the same time, we have objectives and goals and things that we want to accomplish. And that's just part of, especially for my entrepreneurs out there, that's part of being in, in business and you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? So you want to be able to acknowledge that and at the same time say, okay, I want to be out there and, 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 and achieving my vision. I know this is a, you know, a, a difficult time and uh, things are going to be challenging for us. You know, maybe it's a short term, maybe it's a long term issue. But, but I want to get out there and I want to make things happen. So again, think about ways for you to be creative. You know, who's on your team? Think about ways you can begin to, to, to collaborate. Take time occasionally to get out above the situation, you know, especially when, the, when you feel that pressure building up <clears throat> inside the organization. Uh, you know, especially over the last couple of weeks as we've started to go through this and we've started to see the markets capitulate a little bit and um, we're getting different information about what the, the virus does or doesn't do. Occasionally, it just helps to say, okay, I'm going to turn off the TV. I'm going to turn off the news. I'm going to go back and I'm going to digest what I've seen today. And I want to look at this with a mindset of, wait a second, what's my strategic vision here? Again, thinking about how do I sustain my business? What are the things I need to do? How do I, how do I look at my risks and begin to mitigate them? So take time to, to, to get out above the fray. And then thinking about moving beyond. What is it that you want to do in the business now that's going to allow you, once we finally get to the other side of this crisis, once we get, you know, you know hopefully it's a very short crisis. Um, you know, I, I, that's my, my, my biggest hope and prayer in this, or in this time is that we can get through this uh, very, very quickly. But we want to look beyond this and say, okay, at the end of this, what do, where do I want my business or my organization to be? How do I want to be positioned? And, and where do we want to be relative to where we happen to be right now? How do we, how do we make the most of this time? And again, it requires uh, us, I think, as leaders to, to be present, to, to look around, to have a frame of reference, to, to, to know who we are in this time of, of uh, again, of crisis, and to, to say, you know what, I understand this, it's, it's a real crisis, but as an organization, we're going to plan and we're going to get through it. So uh, I mentioned that I'm going to just go over this. Uh, I know many of you have probably seen this before, but I just wanted to, you know, get started with the, the, the very, very basics. Again, sometimes it's about blocking and tackling. And, and if you can look at your value chain and all of the different components that go into your business, you know, all the different activities that allow you to produce great products and services for your customers and your clients, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pay huge dividends down the road uh, when you look at them under crisis circumstances and you look under, uh, at them under different uh, types of scenarios. So one of the things that uh, I'm going to give you a resource, it's a basic uh, business plan. It's going to be available on my website. It's a, it's a Word document, so you can feel free to take it, edit it. Um, it's just a shell, and, and again, it's a basic, a very, very, very basic business plan. But I wanted to give you some ideas on ways to look at scenario development. So again, if it's a two-week crisis, awesome. If it's an 18-month crisis, not so awesome. But guess what? We can figure out a way to, to, to look at building out those scenarios and just create decision points and then ways to build in that data analysis so we can get through this. So in addition to looking at your business plan, I want you to consider all the resources that you have. You know, who's on your team? Who are the most critical people? Who are the stakeholders, people inside your organization, outside your organization, your suppliers, again, getting back to that value chain? You know, think about equipment and infrastructure. You know, I'm not working in an office right now, but I, I can do business at home. I, I can, you know, have a virtual background here. Um, I can work at the house. And yes, I got my kids running around here. And, and uh, you know what? But you know, we're all in this. And uh, the bottom line is that, that it's totally doable for us to be able to, 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 to figure out ways to configure the equipment and our infrastructure so that it works for us. Again, it may not be optimal, 
And, and uh, you know, for those of you who are the Six Sigma gurus and lean management gurus out there, you're cringing because you're thinking, wow, that's what I live my life for. But right now, again, it's about being able to sustain the business and create um, the infrastructure that allows us to mitigate risk, meet our client needs, and then figuring out, okay, yes, this is the time period we're in. And uh, we can apply those different processes along the way um, as we're developing the risk management plan. But we want to be able to get from point A to point B, and we want to be able to do it in a way that leaves us the most intact as possible. What are my capital requirements? How much time is it going to take? All of those different considerations um, that uh, are part of your decision-making framework. So pick models, right? I picked a few here, uh, you know, some from my background in business, others from my military experience. But think about different models that you can use that uh, maybe would be unique for you, for your business, and then configure those things in ways that make uh, great sense. So I have a, a template. It's an Excel spreadsheet. I've developed a couple of macros uh, inside of there that, uh, you know, with different drop down menus. And again, these are just very, very basic. So I don't want to say that, you know, they're finished products by any means, but I wanted to give you some things that would give you a, a sense of how you might take a spreadsheet and configure it for your business. So, you know, Pestel is one, Carver uh, for risk management and, and looking at targeting five forces, um, you know, basic un ways to understand the market. And, and remember, in the, in, the, in, the, in the entire spectrum strategically, we're all going through the same environment right now. And, and your competitors, especially if you did a SWAT, they're going to be uh, experiencing the same sense of chaos and, and stresses as, as you are. So <clears throat> it, would, it would, I think, bear uh, you know, great consideration to go through and pick a few models for you to, to go out and look at okay, where, where do I happen to find myself? What's the, how is the crisis exactly affecting my business? How's it affecting the vertical and the market that I work in today? And how do I wanna take that information and then apply it to my business plan working, uh, moving forward? And lastly, good, great rule of thumb, regardless of whether we're in a crisis or not, is keep it simple. Keep the decision-making and the process and the business plan, keep it all very, very simple and understandable. So here are next steps, just a, a six step plan. Uh, you know, think about downloading the free resources that are available on uh, my website. And it's under our crisis, uh, crisis planning page on the Strat IQ website. This presentation is available there. Um, download all the free resources uh, that'll include a business plan and the spreadsheet. Uh, I am going to be putting out information about how to use those tools as, uh, as we move forward through here. So um, keep, keep, uh, stay tuned for additional videos that go over um, different aspects of how to apply uh, the business planning process to your business. Step two is establish the intent or your vision for the plan. <clears throat> Step three, look, uh, develop your plan. Look at how you want to customize that for your business. Step four, and you can be doing this along the way, execute your plan, take actions, take decisive actions, right? And these are actions that are, are measurable actions, things that you can see moving the ball forward. Um, and the more you're involved in that process and you're moving the ball forward, um, it's not gonna mitigate the fact that we're in a crisis, but it's sure as heck gonna make it a lot easier to get through it if every day you're taking a couple, three steps to try to move the ball forward uh, for your organization if, in your business. Step five assess the results, figure out where you can pull d d data from, you know, whether it's, it's uh, revenue or clients contacted or email sent out or things that you're posting on your website. Think about how you assess what's going on in your business and, and ways that you can begin to then incorporate that information, right? And step six is go back and look at step two. Think about uh, the intent that you have given the information. Right. And again, with the fast evolving situation that we find ourselves in, the more you're going to find yourself probably planning uh, in the planning stage uh, pretty frequently because you're going to be getting a lot of data back. You're going to be moving along. You're going to be executing. You're going to be getting new information in the scenario as you get through it. It's going to guide you along in that process. And, uh, and it's going to be able to help direct that business planning process. And again, 
the more active you are in that process, uh, you know, the, 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 I wouldn't say it's going to be easy. I don't want to, I don't want to paint that process, but it's certainly going to make it, um, uh, a lot less painful to be able to go through and, uh, and, and endure the crisis. So lastly, I want to offer my, uh, my hope and my prayer that you'll stay healthy and wish you the best in this time. Uh, I'd encourage you to download the free resources available on my website. Um, take a look at some of, uh, if, you know, if you need it, um, you know, I want to try to make as much of this free as possible and, and um, so give you some free resources. But if you happen to need a customized strategy, um, I am available to, uh, to do that with your company. Um, but I want to try to give as many free resources as possible to, uh, the, the business community as an organizational community, uh, as possible. But, um, if you happen to need a customized strategy and you want to sit down to do that, I'd, I'd, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to work with you and, uh, and your organization. Um, what I'd ask you to do is, you know, complete a profile, which would include the basic, um, business plan first. Um, because if, if it's possible for you to do it for free, I, you know, I'll be the last one to tell you to, to spend money on a consultant or a coach at this point. Um, so try the free resources first. And then uh, if you need something that's a little bit more specialized, uh, we can certainly talk about that in terms of customizing it for you and your business. Um, but that's the website out there. It's uh, strataiqconsulting.com forward slash crisis management. And again, I, uh, I want to offer to, uh, my best to you and, uh, uh, your families uh, to stay safe and stay healthy out there as uh, as we go through this. Appreciate you tuning in today, and uh, I look forward to hearing from some of you. Take care. Bye bye.